On today's episode, it's a good old-fashioned mailbag, so you know we have a good time answering your questions, start sits, this player, rest of season, or that player, and the Thursday night breakdown of the Cowboys versus the Saints. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. If you've wanted to get in shape but don't have time to get to the gym, Echelon brings the gym home. When you're trying to reach your fitness goals, it can really help to have world-class instructors like Nicole Griffin and Michael Brown, choreographing classes with music from your favorite artists, and you get a community of hundreds of thousands of people that can give you that extra push. Echelon gives you that. Echelon is the affordable way to get the workout equipment, the workout community, and the instructor's motivation right in the comfort of your own home. Echelon's fitness app provides you thousands of live and on-demand classes with great music from your favorite artists like Pitbull and many more. With Echelon, you can work out anytime, day or night, and crush your fitness goals just pick your class, climb the leaderboard, cheer each other on, and give it your all. And right now, for a limited time, podcast listeners can get up to $800 off MSRP. To get this exclusive podcast discount, text FANTASY to 818181. Text FANTASY to 818181 to get up to $800 off MSRP. Text FANTASY to 818181. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Right into your ear hole. Holes. Yeah, I was going to say, just one of them? <laughs> We're not coming in in stereo anymore? You might have one uh, earbud in. We switched to mono. <laughs> okay. That's the future. <laughs> if you've got a right earbud in, you're hearing nothing. That's what happened. <laughs> Well, you, they don't know what you're saying, Mike. Oh, they're a paradox. <laughs> it is <laughs> December 1st. Oh, it's Christmas for the rest of you. Fantastic. It's been Christmas for a month over here, but welcome to the party. It is the most glorious month of the year, as proven by the Spitballers podcast, where we drafted months, and December was not only the first one drafted, but the clear vote getting poll winner. Uh, we, yeah, it is, it is Christmas time here. That's, that's the proof of concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Majority rule. Science. Uh, I, I think I shared some Instagram of my like Christmas lights or something. And then all of the people that live in States where it snows just make fun of you thinking it's Christmas without snow. Oh, sure. sure. But we never have snow. No. Therefore that's never been associated with Christmas for us. And yeah, we're I, not dreaming of a white it's Christmas. Been, we just set a record for the most 80 degree days in November. That's did right. Did you know that? Oh, I did not. I mean, I'm sorry. I meant to call it no loss November. Like, did I not? Oh, is that, that a Phoenix Suns reference? It was. Yes. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard good things about snow. Like, it can be fun on Christmas that you have the, like, oh, it's so majestic. The light reflects off of the snow. And then it just turns into like a brown slush. Is yeah. kind of what I've heard. Brooks, as the resident snow expert. Uh, yep. Have you had a brown slush Christmas before? Yep, and it's cold and mm. terrible. I mean, you come from the coldest place on earth, I think, Michigan. And uh, <laughs> you you have never regretted sunny Christmases? Nah. If I could look outside and see the snow and that's it, that'd be cool. It's funny to it think about It is more about picturesque, that. no yeah, doubt. It, no it doubt. is certainly the, the picture of Christmas. But it is funny to think, you know, every year my kids get like right on toys, you know, bikes and right. rollerblades. It's like, go rollerblade in the snow. That's an interesting question. You can't, is, you can't do it, Mike. Well, okay. That, that solves riddle number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, I mean, I, I've never thought about this. Up, you know, up north or just in colder They're places. They're roller skis up there, Jay. That's, are they giving just <laughs> far more winter activity type of uh a gear than compared to us probably less golf clubs for christmas up in the great white north but More. when do you get your golf clubs then uh, fourth of july Let's parties i don't know birthday <laughs> yeah we don't know nothing about them cold places 
Welcome into the show. We've got uh, a lot on today's episode. Some news to talk about. Buy or sell. We've got a Thursday night preview. Should be an interesting game this Thursday. Hopefully not a stinker. Mm. All alone on the island game. Mm. And uh, the Megalobowl playoffs are underway. Jason, you wanted to give a little... Uh, update on the Megalobowl. Yeah, so if because we've had some questions of you know how how are these playoffs working? We've already finished week one of the playoffs. So if you were top three in your league uh, at the end of last week, then you are already in the playoffs. You might not even know if you won or lost in round one. The top fifty percent of scores move on every week from here on out until championship week. All you have to do is go to megalobowl.com. That will show the leaderboard. That's where the scoring is. It doesn't matter in the sleeper app what your matchup is. Just put your best lineup in, score the most points. And if you want to check out how you did, how you're doing, did you move on, did you make the cut, we're down to the elite, you just go to megalobowl.com and check the leaderboard there. And yes, I am into round two personally. With so many people in the playoffs, uh, there is heartbreak as well, is there not? I mean, oh. we've had we've had some people lose out on moving on by like point two points. Yep, yep. I'm sorry for probably your Mike. Loss. I mean, I don't know if he's in it, but if he is, he certainly didn't make it through. You, you think I made the playoffs? Okay, that's a good not point. This year, uh, oh yeah, we've got Spotify Green Room this afternoon as well. Oh, the party room. That's a. It's always a good time. Mm -hmm. That's what three p.m. Pacific, six Eastern. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it four p.m. Mountain? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And uh, that would make it five Central. I yeah. <laughs> Let's get them all covered. We don't have snow. We don't have daylight savings. Uh, but we we're, we're glad you're tuning in. Let's move on. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, let's go into week 13. Buy or sell Lamar Jackson. Is he a top five quarterback against Pittsburgh? Mike is the authority on all things Lamar Jackson. Uh, he has not hit that mark on the road at all in 2021, a top five quarterback. Pittsburgh, uh, what, T.J. Watt just got added to the COVID list. I don't know if we have an update there. They certainly didn't do what we thought they'd do when they got back some of their defensive players. They Correct. got absolutely boat raced by Joe Mixon and company. So Lamar top five in Pittsburgh. What do you think? I, I'll jump in here first and I'm going to go to a lot of analysis, scientific uh, backings. And it's the fact that I don't actually need Lamar Jackson to do anything productive for my team anymore because I'm already dead. So, you're you're darn right. He'll be a top five this week because it doesn't matter for me. As as it's all about me. As silly <laughs> as that is, you're probably right. Um, <laughs> that being said, I'm going to use the analysis side. He's only been top five three times on the season. Pittsburgh, while off a bad game, is a good team, a good, well coached team, a good defense. So I don't think he hits the mark of top five this week. I will sell. I'm going to sell it as well. I, we were looking at the standings yesterday and obviously Baltimore is, they're there and they've done it in a way where I don't think anybody's looking at Baltimore and saying they're dominant, right? right. Yeah. They, they, they don't feel like the powerhouse that they have been in the past. And I, de I think it speaks highly to what Lamar has been able to do. He's, he's brought them back. There's been a number of games they've won where I think mentally you, you counted them as losses. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I, I, uh, I would personally say Lamar Jackson is the MVP if the season was over right now. So, Mike, you bought it? That is correct. And then we sold. Okay. And then David Montgomery, is he a top five running back against Arizona? Top 15. Oh, yes. Sorry. Top 15 running back against Arizona by sell. Has not hit double-digit fantasy points since returning. The RB 28 in back-to-back -back weeks. What's going on? Yeah, he's he's certainly getting the work. Uh, ninety five percent of snaps, eighty five percent of snaps, eighty four percent of snaps. Those are phenomenal numbers for a running back. Um, I think he's talented. I think he's going to get the opportunity. the The running back fifteen is a line that I feel like he should beat. That being said, very difficult matchup against Arizona. They're number three against the run. When you consider his stretch of being outside the top twenty and the poor matchup, I'm going to. Sadly, sell. I will say David Montgomery is just outside the top 15 running backs this week. 
Yeah, it's hard for me to say he's going to get in there as well. I don't know what's going on. All the reasons Jason highlighted, I will sell it as well. I will sell as well. Hunter Renfro. He's been a top 14 wide receiver in three of the past four weeks. Buy or sell Hunter Renfro as a top 20 wide receiver against the Washington football team. Man, Hunter Renfro. Uh, he's, he's a top 24 wide receiver on the season. Uh, you had, you know, the, the targets are very safe. They haven't really shifted, you know, uh, seismically since Henry Ruggs has departed from the team. But you also have a, a potential uh, issue with Darren Waller. He's got the uh, the IT band injury. Him being out that could lead to an extra, you know, two targets and take him over that ten threshold, which he somehow hasn't hit. He's He's flirted with it many times, but just hasn't surpassed it. And the Washington matchup, I still think, remains good for wide receivers, despite what uh, Russ and company did uh, this past week. So I'm, I'm going to buy Renfro will hit that mark. Yeah, to, to speak to that, the Washington defense is very interesting to me because they were so horrifically bad to start the year. You targeted them, and that was a surprise, right? They were supposed to be good. They have good personnel, right. and then they stunk. They've actually been pretty good. If you look at on the course of the season, they're a top five matchup for for wide receivers as far as like a bottom five quality defense. But over the last five weeks, they're actually the fifth best against wide receivers. They've been locking them down. But then it's like, OK, factor in those matchups. Exactly. Carolina with Cam Newton and Russell Wilson with the broken hand. But I think that Washington is a good defense at this point. I'm going to sell the top 20. I would have sold top 15. I'm going to buy top 20. I think he'll PPR his way there. That was buy yourself from our friends at pristine auction. Go to pristine auction.com. Use the code ballers. Use the code ballers. Ballers. And you'll get a $10 credit. Sorry. I was, I had to uh, make sure that Hunter Renfro in my rankings reflected my thoughts. So I also moving them up. I, I think when we use PPR as a verb, it's it feels inappropriate, right? When he, when Hunter so Renfro PPRs his way <laughs> to a top twenty, it okay. really feels Whoa. like he's just he's just letting loose right on the field. He's just <laughs> he's peeing everywhere. Yeah, it's because PPR said that way sounds like pee pee, right? He's or pee -pee or his like way pooper, there. right? Either one. I mean, it either, could go either oh way. Gosh. Yeah, drop chow. <laughs> Uh, let, let's let's go Renfro. Also, let's go Renfro. Can I use this moment to just say how much I love Hunter Renfro? Sure. You do? Yeah, he go, you're is up. so much fun to watch play. He plays like the kid that's all heart. He's not afraid. He goes right across the middle and he will take a helmet in the face and pop up and keep playing. He and, is by far my favorite tax accountant wide receiver. Yeah, yes. It just I, I I love Hunter Renfro. Um, I had to get you to do the uh, the low voice ballers, Mike, mm -hmm. with because I saw a review of the show. Oh, and they said they really enjoy it, but their favorite part of the show, which is you echoing ballers, hasn't been around for a while. Oh, which clearly you weren't ready. I mean, you I, were not. You're a little out of practice. I apologize. You, I was, you know, working. Yeah, I know. I, it, it, <laughs> Not that this isn't working, but I was working inside of the work, hmm. which distracted me Wah. from the work. Let's do some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Daniel Jones dealing with an X strain, unlikely to play against Miami. The defense in Miami has been outstanding of late. I mean, they're in the playoff picture. They're battling. Sure. And uh, Mike Glennon will start. Did someone say a neck strain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is funny when you when you strain a neck and then Mike Glennon comes in. No, that's because he's got a stronger he and has, longer. It's very strong. If you strained that neck, his oh. head would be able to touch the ground while standing. Uh, well, hopefully he he can keep it keep it tight and right. Keep it upright. Uh, he hasn't won. In the NFL since 2017. No. What? So, I think Miami's a good, good play. Oh. Absolutely. It, the question that I have is Saquon Barkley, who, you know, is involved and I think down the stretch run will be important for fantasy playoffs. This isn't helpful, right? This isn't good 
to no. get the backup quarterback in for your running game. No, it's not. And he and Barkley hasn't been good for fantasy yet, so it's scary. Sean Payton was not ready to name Taysom Hill the starter. Oh, Sean Payton. It's a Thursday game. You rascal. The foot has been a problem. So, you know, when people were worried about what are you doing, how, how can you pay him? Like, it's it's been injury, right? Like, Sean Payton's not dumb. So you, you have this weapon that you've not been using whatsoever. Um, he's been there as a backup, but not on the field. But we might not see him Thursday. Yeah, Sean Payton is is certainly not dumb, um, but he is a magician. He's just not the budget variety. Right. He, he wants He's to, a Copperfield. We absolute. Oh man, do I love David Copperfield? Do you uh, really? Oh yeah, David Copperfield's I'd, the man. That's I. I only know the name. I don't know what he does. Anything he wants, <laughs> Mike. Does he, he has do, made a deal with the devil? Does he make like the the just the like the Statue of Liberty yes. disappear stuff? That was him. Okay. okay. Now um, he doesn't. Uh, does he, he doesn't practice anymore. <laughs> Does he? No, he Does is, he still perform? Yeah, he's in Vegas right now. I laughed because I I said practice and it seemed like he was a doctor of some oh. sort. But uh, he he's in Vegas. He's got to be like two hundred, three hundred years he, old. Yeah, he doesn't age because magic. <laughs> um, but the point is here, Sean Payton will usually do everything you know that he can do to keep the opponent from having information like even last year when it was the Jameis Winston Taysom Hill that was right down to the wire he wouldn't say he's being asked he's so it's like I don't trust that it's a foot I well, think that they're using the foot I still think Taysom he didn't Hill's go magician start. the last two weeks with Trevor Simeon at quarterback he could no. have done that could have unlocked the the advantage that Matt Nagy is you know conveyed into victories or was that all part of the plan <laughs> oh man Setting up the joke. Mm -hmm. the, I, he uh, is he is hurt, and it's a it is a uh, pain tolerance injury for Taysom Hill. Who Mike, is, you made him your streamer. Yeah, yeah well, I, at the time, didn't realize how you know how bad the foot injury was. So we will see that the the point of the stream is if Taysom Hill is good enough to play football. Then I would play him for fantasy. I'm jumping in real quick. Uh, Ian Rappaport did say this morning that. Uh, if the foot holds up today in practice, he, they're likely starting him. Okay. That's good. There you go. And we had Kareem Hunt uh, injury update expected to be fine despite being held out the final drive in the Ravens game. Jarek McKinnon was placed on IR. So Clyde and Daryl and I guess Gore as the running back room. And what else do we have? Some big names we're monitoring for injury reports and practices today. Pay attention to Kyler and Hopkins, whether they're back. We hope so. Did you see Kyler tweeted some Thanos? Uh, yeah. That, we believe that was because of Lincoln Riley. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Moving you, uh, moving colleges. Do you follow this uh, the, the Cliff Kingsbury to Oklahoma hype? Yes. I'm still – I'm worried. You're worried? I'm worried because I know, I know that the Cardinals can't pay him what Oklahoma will. And we've already seen that house, my friend. <laughs> you he think needs... he's in debt? No, he's... <laughs> 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 no, I don't I... think he's in debt. But the... I his think contract's he's... coming up, and the Cardinals, they're going to redo the deal for Cliff, no matter what, at, after this season. And maybe they pay him $10 million a year. But I think Oklahoma can do better, and I just, I'm just I... not sure. Th yeah, maybe. He I was mean... uh, not decisive in his answer. I think that Clifford likes the attention. Okay. Clifford? Yes. Hey, when when you please pull, tell me that's his Clifford with a K? Oh goodness. Is that gracious. his full name? When like when you pull that nonsense, you are the head coach of a number one seated NFL team. Well, I guess me is Green Bay. Green Bay may have passes. Whatever. A, a an NFL team with a nine and two record that is headed into the playoffs, and you get asked about a demotion. Because moving to college is a demotion, professionally speaking. Uh, if, I don't know if Nick Saban would agree with you. Uh, I think. I mean, it, there are certain jobs in the. No, no. Look, if but I bet you, if you ask Nick Saban, we could uh we could immediately flip this, and you would have Bill Belichick's resume, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have all the college championships. You would have Super Bowls. Uh, I maybe out loud he would say no, I would not do that. But in his heart, he would trade those for Super Bowl wins. Cardinals are so, the one seed. 
So Thank to you. me, it's it's a demotion. I wasn't gonna let that slide either. No. Andy. Thank you. Oh, I I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. but I wanted to make sure that. Oh, you what's better, are nine certain. and two or nine and three? Is the real question. Oh, I would prefer to be nine and two. Yeah. But he just he wanted the attention because he's not he's not going to a college after this success. You're probably right, uh, especially being connected to Kyler. I imagine that would be tough. It's how much money? But he do will. You he's going to make a lot of money. He's yes. going to get oh, a, yes. a new deal, and he's going to make a lot of money in Arizona. Justin Fields, Antonio Brown, Miles Sanders, we'll keep an eye on them. You know, Antonio Brown rumored to be back this week. That was today's News and Notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the Sleeper app. Join their breaking alerts channel. It is faster than every other source. And before we move into the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Oh. Jason. Oh. Mm. Did you know that your butt has a favorite app? Yes, I did. That's right. It is SeatGeek. This is where you go to get your tickets we have used SeatGeek for years. Dude, my butt was in a seat last night. It was. You were I'm at, a little tired. You were at the Suns game. Uh, how'd that go? Very well. It went very well for the Suns. So that's a win? That's a W. Over uh, loser loser Warriors? Oh, man. man they're, they, they're both 18-3. and three. I'm going to give them their due. Look, they're, they're both good, but one of them is much better than the other. And SeatGeek, if you want to go to a game like that, SeatGeek is how you can do it. It is so beloved by butts everywhere. Yeah. They've made it the highest rated ticketing app. Concerts, baseball, basketball, football. I mean, wherever you want to go, SeatGeek can get you there, and they make it really easy. They rate tickets from 0 to 10 to make sure that you're getting a good deal. Green is good. Red is bad. Very simple. And you can get $20 off your first purchase with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. That's promo code FOOTBALLERS. For twenty dollars off your first SeatGeek order, SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Download the app today. We want to thank Wealthfront for supporting the show. Maybe you followed the stonk craze. Maybe you stonk stonk. Uh, you know, rocket ships and memes and day trading and well, look, that's not how you generally grow long term wealth. Uh, what you need to do is open up a Wealthfront investment account. Decades of data show that investors that trade individual stocks underperform the market. Uh, in fact, only 1% of day traders beat the market. Are you the 1%? The doubtful. <laughs> doubtful. The odds are not in your favor. But investing, uh, look, it's a complicated world. You could be a beginner or you could be an experienced investor, but Wealthfront makes it easy because they have the right tools for your portfolio. They create a portfolio of globally diversified low-index funds, uh, low-cost index funds personalized for you. And they do it in minutes. And uh, they are trusted with over $20 billion of assets, and you can get your first $5,000 managed for free by going to wealthfront.com slash footballers. All you need is $500 to get started, grow your wealth the easy way, and let Wealthfront do the work for you to get your $5,000 managed for free for life. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash footballers to start growing your savings. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today mailbag Mailbag. it may be hard for the listeners of this podcast to believe this what but i i i do try to be fair and balanced despite the side comments on the cardinals or sons or the you know we're from arizona but in the last two days mike has done no such thing on this show. Entirely unabashed. Oh, yeah. No regard for human life. Riding the high of being the number one NBA and number one NFL team well, in America. And so I'll follow up that, uh, yes, I do remain balanced and objective when it comes to the Cardinals and fantasy football. With the Phoenix Suns, heck no. Get that crap out of here. Uh, this isn't a basketball analysis show. We are the Suns, and we are better than you right now. Mm. Jason, any thoughts on the... Uh... I'll just say I love it. That's <laughs> that's pretty much it. I just love it. Um, it's really fun to finally... This is like my boy Jason childhood dream of right. having the Cardinals and the Suns be great at the same time, which here's the thing, That's listeners. why Kyle's moving here. Yes. Uh, look, Fuckland, if you're unaware... We've spent the large majority of our lives sucking. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, act like you've been there. But we haven't. Look, so last thing, I'll, last thing I'll say to the Warriors is, did your best player play the whole game? Because ours didn't. I don't think theirs did either. 
Oh. <laughs> Mikel Bridges saw to that, baby. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to do fantasy football questions <laughs> all right, now. All right. uh, let's start with the voicemail question on the Packers' backfield. Hey, ballers. This is Celeste from Boston. I have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, PPR. Which one do I start after the bye? I lost this week because I started Jones, and Dillon just looks like he has more juice. Thanks, guys. It, oh, man. it is a question. It is. It is a real question. Because, I mean, Jason, you weren't on the Monday show, but A.J. Dillon has something unique that he brings this team. And they're a great team. And I think in part it's because of what he, he represents for their offense. I mean, what's, where do you lean on this debate right now? I lean on the Aaron Jones side. And I fully recognize that it's a legitimate debate. Um, I don't think that, you know, oh, Aaron Jones is the starter, A.J. Dillon's the backup, you can't even start A.J. Dillon, yada, yada. He has proven his value over the last month. A.J. Dillon has been awesome. That being said, obviously two weeks ago, uh, Aaron Jones missed the game. He was gone due to injury, um, and A.J. Dillon was very admirable, serviceable in his stead. This last week, once Aaron Jones was surprisingly back, right? I mean, most people yes. thought he was going to not play that week. He rushed back. He got out there, and he was outplayed in that matchup, fantasy-wise and otherwise, by A.J. Dillon. But he was on a first game shockingly back from an injury. I still think that Aaron Jones is the main dude. History is on the side. And, and when you know the caller said it seems like the juice is with A.J. Dillon, I, I would say the juice is with both. I don't look at Aaron Jones and be like he's lost a step or he's not a good player. Um, I think that the more opportunities will go to Aaron Jones um, following the bye week. I am with you. I would play Jones. Yeah, I, I chalk it up to the rushing back from injury, a perfectly placed bye week for rectifying that situation. AJ in DC has a question for us. Now, if you're eating, I recommend oh my you goodness. cease eating for a moment. Um, it's gross. David Johnson against Indy mm -hmm. or Alex Collins against San Francisco oh, in a PPR league. Whoa. Now, have, I will go DJ have for we, AJ in DC. Uh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I don't know what that cadence was. Uh, it wasn't. Again, and we didn't really mention it on uh, Monday's show, but David Johnson got banged up in this game uh, multiple times. Multiple times. I mean, he he. I don't think he like left and never returned from an injury. He just you, you saw it once the once the injury happened. He looked slower than current version of David Johnson, and so I don't know that if that's being reported on. I'll, I'll be interested to see when their practice reports start coming out if he's you know limited or in fact doesn't practice at all but generally speaking if David Johnson is going to play limited <laughs> and Alex Collins is going to play because of the PPR bump David Johnson should give you two to three free points with a reception so I'd go that way oh or, or two to three points <laughs> yeah, on man. the day man. what happened to Alex Collins well I, I would say what happened to the Seattle Seahawks sure uh, I mean they're, they're a team that they put up 15 points this last week just putrid they they could only muster 15 total points against the Washington football that, team to be that fair, was that the was... best the most points they've scored in over a month yes that's crazy and I think maybe the Alex Collins Reality is that he's Alex Collins as well. He just he had. I mean, he is he had he had a little stretch of yeah, he being, had juice once upon a time. Yeah, not so recently. Well, like last year, I thought he was okay. I mean, in the last five weeks, three a carry on a you know on a hundred and eighty attempt pace. He had a three week stretch where he kind of looked okay. But I don't know. I yeah. They're both bad options. They are both really bad options. The one thing I will say is that David Johnson has the more difficult matchup. The Colts have been as tough a matchup for running backs as anyone. Now, I recognize that last week they were dominated by Leonard Fournette. Um, they gave up 17 rushing touchdowns in one week. 
Um, so on the season now they look like they're a beatable defense, but that's a really difficult defense, and I, I don't see David Johnson do that. I lean Alex Collins, um, and, but I, I hope the waivers have been kind to you. Yeah. I should probably put some claims in, huh? No. What? <laughs> no. You're good, man. Don't, uh, don't do that. I already took Al's players last week, so uh, let's go to a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. This is Freeman in Maine. Two quick questions. Uh, one, uh, Hunter Renfro or Tyler Lockett for the rest of the season? And the second question is, what is the action figure over Jason's left shoulder? Is it Ace Ventura or Andy Kaufman playing the bongos? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Love the show. Bye. That's Ace Ventura. Thank you. <laughs> and were the bongos the head of the miniature Kyler Murray that he saw? That. He saw. I can oh, see that. Perhaps. Yeah. No, it's uh, Jason is a an illustrious Ace Ventura truther. Yeah, I would I would broaden that, but uh, Ace Ventura, you Jim can, Carrey. Yes, there you go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so that's the first part, or the, I guess that's the second part of the question. Easy answer. On the first part, much more difficult answer between Hunter Renfro and Tyler Lockett. And I think both answers are right in a way because if, if you have a team that has a – let's just pretend this is your wide receiver two. If you have a very high variant wide receiver one sure. with big weeks, small weeks, I would go Renfro. I would like get – like Jamar, if your wide receiver one yes. right now is Jamar Chase, yes, I would go Renfro. If I was, uh, if I had a, a wide receiver one that was more like Deontay, I would go Lockett. I would, I'd be Lockett still managed in this horror of offensive uh, performances by, you know, Russ. He's, you know, ninety six yards last week. He he gets loose down the field. Over, yeah, the, over the last four games, Tyler Lockett is back to averaging five for ninety four. Yeah, he, he's over been a four game stretch. He's been very good. I. Um, I've said, and I will continue to say, I will not under any circumstance start Russell Wilson until after he shows that he's back, but I do think he will get back. Um, I tried to, tr you know, I was talking to Brooks today about this is the window. If your dynasty trades are still open, which ours aren't to try to get Russ. Um, but I, I think, um, I'm, I'm definitely willing to continue to start Tyler Lockett and he would be my answer in a vacuum there is a world i'm looking at the seattle schedule and it's like you know they're at home against san francisco this week okay then they get houston right so if, if there's ever a time to be back it's it's in houston but do you know who they in this championship week russ wilson mm -hmm. at home detroit and if we're like up down up down until that point what a dilemma that's going to be for players because oh, yeah. you could have a huge week i mean he has all of the you know, when you have Metcalf and Lockett and, and those guys downfield against Detroit, there's a lot to like about that. Twitter question from Kali. Zach Ertz or Logan Thomas rest of season? Oh. Oh, my. I actually feel safer with Zach Ertz, and that comes from a higher amount of red zone opportunities for this player. I have more confidence in their offense. To get into, I mean, the Cardinals' offense is dynamic. They're going to score more points over the rest of the year, and Ertz is has been amazing. Yeah, I I have confidence in both of these players, which is rare at the tight end position because you're just not confident in many. I think both will be good, but I agree with what you're saying. I would take the offense uh, and the quarterback play of the Arizona Cardinals um, over Taylor Heineke and the Washington Football Team. Mike, I lean. I think I would take Logan Thomas. Um, Again, it wasn't a huge week. We talked about the uh, the touchdown. Zach Ertz, st since his stint in Arizona, two great games, three meh games. Uh, Only and, Kyler for one game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and so it's I I just I lean the I'll take the more necessary player. I it's a very fair argument. Offense over uh, being the being a higher option in the in the wide receiver or in the targets, but like Hopkins is going to be back, and they will be back to full strength very soon, and we don't know exactly what that will shake out. Chase for, Edmonds for Zach too, Ertz. right? Yeah, there's a lot of players coming back for and Arizona. With, uh, to to speak to that side, McKissick, uh, we don't know. I haven't heard an update on his injury. The but last the last thing I heard is that his agent proclaimed he was okay. So it could be a Okay. It could be a short absence for something that looked real scary, but maybe it was just like a stinger 
And so you and the agent is his doctor as well. Or I, I don't know. I just I'm just passing along information that I have seen. Uh, there was uh, Stefania Bell had reported that. On uh, Mike, I want to know this answer. It's very important that you give me a definitive yes or no. That's what uh, I'm here for. Instagram question from Mark Timothy Evans says, "Will Saquon Barkley ever be a lead again?" Oh my! Um, will he ever be elite? It comes down to will he will they get a pocket passing quarterback that's exactly my thought as well ha <laughs> ha then it's a good thought because i, I instantly I just, went just to the to i instantly went to the quarterback and thought to myself can you get who's the next man up in new, i mean gettleman's going to be gone too right yeah it's it's going to be an overhaul here it's uh, me <laughs> yeah dave's going to be unemployed oh. <laughs> sorry dave you had a a run. I won't say it's a good run, but he had a run, and he needs targets. Like it's a, it is a faster rebuild to his value to get a quarterback that will check it down to him over and over and over than it is for the New York Giants to completely rebuild their offensive line because Saquon hits big plays, but if he, if you don't have multiples of those in one game. Then you just, all you have is him running for like two to three yards per carry, and he needs the the big splash play to counteract that. Jason, this question comes from Rico on YouTube. It's an important one. How do I face my children <laughs> and my wife, knowing that I am absolutely garbage in fantasy football? Oh, brother, that's that's tough. Uh, you don't you don't do it with pride. Uh, that's do you move sure. out? I, I I think you've got to you got to stay at home. You've got to. You've got to just, you know, put one foot in front of the other and you just do that over and over and over. And, and then you're walking. And then you're walking. And the thing is, is if you play long enough, you'll get lucky. <laughs> so one of these years, you are going to be able to stand proud. Um, don't quit. Don't give up. Um, eventually, your opponents will all get injured and you will win a championship. I'm sure of it, Rico. The so just one foot in front of the other. Don't don't li don't abandon the family. No. Never give up. <laughs> never surrender. That's pretty good, Al. You found <laughs> that one, thank huh? Thank you. It's it's been a crazy year, especially for all of us or you know, in the in fantasy football. If you had a pick in the top 6 or 7, I was trying I'm trying to pull up an ADP chart uh, as fast as I can. But Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Kamara, Zeke, Chubb. Like, if those were your first pick, it's been tough. It's been tough in the streets watching, uh, you know, Johnny Taylor uh, have himself a year. Yeah, I agree. Tim Allen, Jim Carrey. Oh, you there have you go. To, there you go. If I have to pick one, it would be Jim Carrey. But those are the two men who raised me. Yeah, those are <laughs> and, and my pop and my pops. But, and your uh, father. <laughs> yeah, I mean he was there. But um, your father, which would you or rather? Jim Carrey? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is tough. Uh, I mean, uh, is that... how many good movies has your father made? Ooh, like good that comedies. Is a good question. Like nice. Com yeah, not even one. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, is that answer the same if it is you have to pick one to raise you? Yeah. yeah you still is. go Jim Carrey? I would still you go You want Jim that Carrey. life? Yeah. I feel like Tim Allen's he was oh, made he's to the be more a steady hand, for sure. A more fatherly <laughs> figure. <laughs> I mean, you get the uh, the eclectic Jim Carrey. You, you learn how to paint. That's right. I mean, look, sometimes you're raised by wolves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, Jalen Waddle or Amari Cooper rest of the season? That Instagram question comes from Joshua. Waddle. Waddle. Waddle, waddle. Oh, Jason's up against it. Well, no, I'm not up against it. It's Waddle, but I guess I haven't really – like that. that is a great comparison to just see where both of these players are. Um, Mari Cooper's been very disappointing. Uh, I still worry about, you know, w first week back from COVID, which he missed two games already for. Um, Cooper is, I think, a great player. I still think, you know, down the playoff run could absolutely win people championships. Um, but you have been able to rely on Waddle so much over the, you know, since week six, 
he's been on a tear. He's been very consistent. Uh, would be on pace for over 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, um, 121 reception, 17-game pace. So he is like – he's just so good as a rookie. He's he, – the, the situation is he is doing this without showing up in like a like a top ten plays of Sunday. Like there aren't, generally speaking, like wow. Until this past that, week, yeah, he yeah, had he, the he one did, big breakaway. What I'm saying, yeah. but, but which he ended up the wide receiver one. But before that, very very solid for fantasy football. Just not in the, uh, in in a in a sensational spectacular way. It's just just steady yeah if you, done. If, if you have not had Jalen Waddle you it very well might be under the radar he is yes. currently the wide receiver 14 on the season um granted has not had his buy yet but he's just been fantastic can I ask you an Andy Holloway follow-up question no oh well, then, all, yeah, all right. right I'll let's allow shut it, it down <laughs> Jalen Waddle or DK Metcalf rest of the season I think I would take Jalen Waddle oh my gosh DK Metcalf obviously has the higher ceiling. Uh, if everything hits right for both players, it's Metcalf in a landslide. Um, but the ceiling is not the only concern here. Yeah. Are we going to start getting some squeaky wheel situation for Metcalf? I mean, I, I, first I, eight weeks was on pace for 1,232 yards and 17 touchdowns. Last three weeks on pace for 390 yards and no touchdowns. I, I don't think it's a matter of demanding and asking for more targets I think it's a matter of can the quarterback get him the ball there's a reason why Gerald Everett has been this dink and dunk king over the last three weeks it's because that's where Russell can get the ball right now are we going to get the end of season this is how injured I was Russell Wilson oh, story 100 percent because I watch all these news conferences he's like I am fine Unlimited. I can limit I can do everything you know he's pushing through being that good soldier I can't wait for going into next year, having him talk about how second, bad it second was, surgery how him. how much um, that affected his play, because right now he's saying it's not, and later he will say it. Couple it, of it uh, couple of questions that aren't start sit decisions, but still very important. Jason, uh, Twitter question from uh, Blankenstein: Can I have hashtag dinner butter at breakfast? Um, I highly recommend dinner butter for breakfast i know it sounds like you can't because that would be breakfast butter but if you have breakfast butter at butter uh, or at breakfast <laughs> it's just a worse breakfast. butter 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 <laughs> um so yeah i mean for sure 100 percent. i i have dinner butter for all of my meals you can you can have dinner for breakfast absolutely breakfast like, for dinner don't let the social construct tell you you can't have a cheeseburger in the morning you do what you want to do Does, are you tell me i could have a glass of orange juice in the afternoon at what? Absolutely. Oh. Jason? I mean, it's very acidic. I don't know if I recommend that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need Not some before tums. You <laughs> okay, you're opening up my world. Uh, this is a question from Instagram, Adam Charles. Mike, uh, what is Jay Grizz's or origin story? Oh, the origin story <laughs> of Jay Grizz. Well, uh, a, a mama bear and a papa bear got together. All righty. <laughs> um, I uh, remember it. Yeah, I I I remember it was uh it was like Jason's first extended absence from the show. What I don't remember is where or what happened. I don't know if it was a illness or you had just a family vacation. No, I think it was I think it was planned. Um I don't think it was an illness. Yeah, we knew he was going to be out of town for a little bit because okay. we were thinking about like, you know, there's going to be an empty chair on the set. Mm -hmm. And uh I, I I knew that I wanted to put something that was like a life-sized cardboard cutout of something and literally i sent mike a text and i was like what do we go with here yeah we went we had a like uh chris farley from tommy boy was an option we had a really muscular guy in a swimming sw swimming yes. trunks yeah but we didn't want to just replace jason with jason right so we went with the and the then big we, i said bear. and then i was like pick an animal and and, <laughs> and and that's why his name jay grizz is because he was the stand-in for yes. me um, but I, this is, so this is the first time that I think I've heard that you had the option of Tommy boy from, yes, I mean, Chris Farley from Tommy boy. Are you, why did you go with the bear? It that seemed more outlandish. Awesome. It seemed he was very uh, a big presence. Oh man. If Chris Farley was a part of this show. Yeah, that's true. You guys made a mistake. We might have, there been, might've been some licensing issues. 
that who cares? <laughs> you know? You know Nothing a little jail time him, can't fix. Could have given him a mustache. You know Jay Grizz is listening, right, Jason? I want to watch I, himself. He, the, I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> but, you know, Chris Farley could be watching too. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. All right. Um, an update for you. No sign of Antonio Brown during the pro, uh, portion of practice mm. today. Let's uh, get into the breakdown. Thursday night breakdown. You don't want to forget the breakdown. No, it's never. at the end of the show, but you don't want to forget that it's there. You want to remember the breakdown. All right. Well, here's uh, the thing. At this point of the NFL season, I don't know what day of the week it is until Andy opens the show and right. says, "Hey, it's Wednesday," and I go, "Okay." okay the it's show Wednesday. is your calendar. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Dallas at seven and four take taking on the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Saints are five and six. DraftKings Sportsbook line has uh, the Cowboys minus four and a half. Over under is 47 and a half in this one. So New Orleans is, is sliding. I mean, four straight losses. Dallas, not much better. Three out of the last four. They struggled wow. against the AFC. Um, it's a get right game for someone. Yeah, well, I I think part of that uh, confidence comes with Dak getting his receiving options, at least some of them, back. He did piece together a good fantasy output at the end of last week, but it wasn't looking great. The offense has struggled without Lamb and, and Cooper. Lamb should be back for sure. Amari Cooper, his story is he didn't practice, and I think he's another player that today's practice report is going to Pretty much tell the story because it's hard to see him playing given the report that came out yesterday of him being still very symptomatic with a cough, but still in the building. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's a little strange, but I, I, I don't think he's going to be in the cardiovascular shape to play a football game. Yeah, and the uh, the Saints are getting reinforcements as well. They they'll get the right tackle back. You have Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram. Um, Ingram seems. 100% to play. Kamara was limited on Monday, Tuesday. There's always the chance that they have to give him one more week. But they're under 500 now, and it seems like they need to get him in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough because you look at what the Saints have gone through over the last month. It's just been a putrid slide into becoming a bad team. Like, they, you look at them now and you say they're one of the, you know, they're they're – they're playing for for a pick, um, but the reality is they've dealt with a massive amount of injuries. And if their offensive line is better, and if Alvin Kamara is back, and if Taysom Hill is there, there's no reason that this team can't rebound. They are not out of the running, um, and I think that they'll have a good showing on prime time. Uh, I expect a, a a good game here, and if Alvin Kamara can get out there, that does enough for Taysom Hill, where I think Taysom would be a good start. Kamara is always going to be started, and um, that would only be good for the options on the other side of the ball. I think you could have, you know, this is a game right now, 47.5 point over under, so it's it's still leaning towards a slightly higher score. I think there's fear that both teams could not show up, but I, I think both teams show up. Yeah, I don't. No? <laughs> no, I don't. I think, he, I think this New Orleans defense will do enough to – to slow down the running game and put it all on Dak, and I, I don't know. I'm worried. I'm afraid of the stinker, and maybe because of that, we'll get a great game. But you know, you're not starting wide receivers for New Orleans, are you? No. With Taysom Hill back behind center, there's going to be probably less volume in general, and no definitive number one. Yeah. If if I had to start one, it would be Traquan Smith, but I you can't make me. I won't try. And then Dak. I mean, you you have confidence you're going to play Dak. You're going to play. Are you going to play Zeke with, with confidence against the number four ranked uh, rush defense over the last six weeks, number one on the year? I mean, I guess you – you Yes. Uh, if yes. it was Zeke or Pollard, let's say you have Pollard because you wanted to ensure okay, Zeke, are you actually playing Zeke over him? I am going to wait for a little bit more of the news to come out, but, yeah, I'll probably go with Zeke. That the, Given the most recent thing is Zeke is practicing in full uh, – he has no idea Jerry, what anyone's talking yeah. about with his injury. Jerry Jones uh, kind of being the puppet master here. I mean, Coach 
Uh, McCarthy's going to be out, right? Correct. Because McCarthy's on the COVID list as well. So it, you, maybe you get some calls from, from up above saying you will play Zeke. From God? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> that Jerry Jones may view himself <laughs> in, in a certain light. Uh, uh. But it's it's – the defense for for New Orleans is so baffling of I mean the last 6 weeks they are dead last against fantasy quarterbacks they're 27th against fantasy wide receivers they it seems like they stop fantasy running backs because they can't stop fantasy wide receivers and quarterbacks I think maybe for some bigger picture analysis of the Zeke situation all of the concern all of the worry all of the Pollard talk over the year, all of the injuries, all of the no Dak. He's the number seven running back on the season. He's been inside the top 20 the last four weeks, including a top 10 performance. Like he is not killing you by any stretch of the imagination. It's not as good as it was from weeks two through five, but, right. but at the same time, you. Okay. So let me ask this. You have less of a chance of a, a really bad game to submarine your week on a Thursday with Zeke than Pollard. Um, you said he's been in the top 20 in in this game buy or sell uh okay late show edition top 15 for Ezekiel Elliott on the week on the week I'll sell it I would sell that as well top 15 I would buy it well great okay I need him to perform in a couple <laughs> leagues I mean you got, thank you Mike you got four teams on buy right yeah so I mean this makes it a little bit easier to get in the top 15 Michael Gallup ended up Five for 106. Now, it was a bad start. People were losing their minds over the fact that he wasn't showing up. And, that, you know, there's a lot of talk about he may make himself a lot of money mm -hmm. if he can perform in this game. I don't know if he made himself any money, but he had an okay game. If if Cooper is out, are you willing to look at Gallup as a flex this week opposite I, of CeeDee Lamb? I'm willing to look at Gallup whether Cooper is there or not. Um, I think As a that, third option? I think so because you could very well see Cooper – having managed limited snaps, you know, Mike's talking about the, the cardio level yeah. of him coming back from this. Right. I think that Gallup will be involved in this passing attack. And usually, you know, the saints, uh, the, the, the wide receiver two and th the second and third option against them is really where they give up the points. Obviously you're going to start lamb, but I, I think Gallup is a fine flex option this week, whether or not Amari Cooper plays. And you have Cedric Wilson, who uh, Cedric Wilson, who was Wilson, uh, he was a star last week. I mean, he hit a, on a bunch of uh, big plays. He got banged up in that game. He was a did not practice on Tuesday. So you could have it. It could be Noah Brown, Michael Gallup, and uh, CeeDee Lamb. So, I mean, if that's the case, I am going to play Gallup as a two with, you know, with, with a decent amount of confidence. Uh, Dalton Schultz? Sure. I mean, it's. I, I think the doctor is a fine. <laughs> is a fine play. He wouldn't be my start of the week this week. It's not a perfect matchup for him, but he's been utilized enough, and um, I, I would be as confident in him. You know, if you're talking him or Higby, I would go with I would go with doc, Dr. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> well delivered. Uh, take Thursday night players out of your flex. Don't forget to do that. And uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. There's a Stefan Diggs signed Bills logo football on auction right now, $31.50. That ends tonight. Use the code BALLERS. 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 For a $10 credit at pristineauction.com. Starts of the week. All the matchups. And uh, probably no Suns talk. Yeah, we'll see. On we'll, tomorrow's we'll, show. We'll talk about it on Green Room tonight, though. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.